Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where today John Coleman and I are speaking with Michelle Fabrica, the love and relationship coach who has guided us through all of the minefields of getting along with somebody. <laughs> Boy, getting along with somebody, it's important, isn't it? Michelle, yeah. as you know, Celebrating Act Two really is dedicated to people over 50, uh, the second half of your life, trying to help people navigate all the ups and downs of the second half of your life. And one of the things that I've noticed, um, partly because of my own gray hair, uh, but I've noticed that as we get older and the kids leave the nest and uh, uh, you move into retirement, People spend a lot of time together that they didn't, you know, he was working, she was working, the kids were going to school, everybody was busy. Now, all of a sudden, you're thrown together, sometimes all day long, and I've noticed that it can drive people crazy. Um, I've heard friends, women friends, say, I wish he would get a hobby. <laughs> you know, do something, get out of my kitchen. But and we made there's lots of jokes about this kind of thing. But I think it is true that uh, particularly after a certain age, I'll call it the age of retirement, whatever that age is for people, and we're thrown together, we're spending more time our, our with our spouses or our loved ones than we ever have before. And it's almost it takes what a, just kind of a new way of looking at life, negotiating you know, what we're doing with each other because it's so different. It's a change from, you know, the first half of, first half of our life. So is, is that a common problem that, that I, I'm talking about? Yeah, I, it is, it is. And I think it can happen at really different stages of life. But and like you said, in particular around retirement, you know, people are maybe home more than they used to be. But I think even in general, like everybody has a different comfort level with how much time they want to spend with their partner. And, um, you know, people, we have ideas that like, oh, we have to spend a lot, of, a lot of time together, whatever that means, or go on vacation together. Or we always have to visit our family together. And, you know, a lot of us were influenced by movies or the way our parents did or fairy tales, you know, whatever. That's how it has to be, what, how it's supposed to be. But I think each person and each, you know, therefore each relationship is kind of has, gets to decide the unique, you know, mix of activities that they are both, you know, that they're each comfortable with. And there's no right or wrong here. So it's kind of like different, our needs for closeness and, and spaciousness or alone time, whatever can change over time. And that that's kind of, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's kind of, that's how a vibrant relationship you know, stays that way is just to have regular, be willing to have regular renegotiations around that. Yeah. Yeah. I know some couples, uh, I know, you know, do, they have a, I, I'll call it a hobby. They have some, something they just do together. They got, I have a, a college friend who, who he and his wife are both golfers and they just have the greatest time. They go to golf courses here, there, everywhere, have lunch. That That's their thing. They, mm -hmm. they love to play golf together. Um, but I know other people who, uh, let's say the man uh, he likes motorcycles. Well, you know, when he's on his motorcycle, she goes find something else to do. Um, so the, 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 you're right. Everybody's different. And they kind of have to work out what they like to do together and how often, I guess. Right. But I think also that, yeah. that, that there should not be anything uh, uh, seeming nefarious about people wanting to do things that are just them. So, for instance, uh, if uh, uh, I like to go to the gym every morning at 7 a.m., that's my wife likes an online exercise class that she uses and she likes knitting. Those are not things to me. She likes mahjong. She goes and plays that, uh, you know, maybe once every week or two uh, or has a knitting club, which is really great because that is her world and that's good. And to me, doing things off on your own and things that you truly enjoy that your spouse doesn't means that you don't have to bore them to death with what you're doing, though they <laughs> with you, and you both get enrichment out of that and you come back. So when you're doing things together, you're both feeling better than if you were constantly putting up with the other person's stuff that they love that you don't particularly like. So I think there's something to be said for, if you will, alone time. 
Yeah, yeah definitely. And um, I think if you're single, it's good to look at, you know, what kind of a closeness, what kind of closeness are you looking for if you're looking to be in a relationship? And right. everybody, you know, do you eventually want to live with someone or not? Are you wanting to never live with someone again and, and have a relationship that's, you know, where you live apart or there are all kinds of ways to look at it. And there's nothing there's, you know, you want to be well matched around that because to me, it's like, I, I like to think of it as like, we're each unique atoms and there's like an optimal bonding distance. And some people want to be all in their close and some people like a lot more space. And so I think this, um, you know, we might, if we're too close for comfort, so to speak, it's like, ah, I gotta get out of it. I'm feeling claustrophobic. Or if we're so far apart, then it's like, God, I'm always longing for more time together. I never feel like we have enough closeness. And so, yeah. you know, maybe those are things that can be negotiated or maybe it's just too far apart. You know, we want different things and there's nothing wrong with that per se. It's it's good to to really pay attention. And, and so um, one of the things I do like to bring up too is there's an author and therapist, Dr. Harriet Lerner, and she writes about this um, pursuer distancer pattern. And so it's a common pattern under stress that, you know, when things are not going so well in the relationship, the pursuer like wants to get closer and let's talk about it. What we need to resolve this, whatever. And the other person's like, oh my God, I need to get away from it. I need a break. And so this pattern starts to develop and um, it can be, you know, really challenging because the more the, the pursuer pursues and more aggressively they pursue, the distancer is like, I got to get out of here. So that's something to notice if you are in that kind of a pattern and, you know, a great um, reason to get professional help and support around that. So you can kind of relax like, wow, I, I want more closeness. How can we create that, which doesn't impinge on each person's, you know, separateness? Yeah. Yeah. It seems like, um, to put it another way, there's really no right or wrong about your togetherness. Um, it's a matter of what works for you. And you, you two people have to work that out. Yeah, yeah. And it's always good to also, you know, I like to encourage people, create new experiences together too. So if they're mm -hmm. not some things that you're currently enjoying together, maybe one person, they used to both, you know, go golfing or whatever, and one person doesn't want to or has injuries that they can't, you know, can they be creating new experiences together too? Because that's always important. Yeah. Okay, so so one of my takeaway here is that let the space be with you or without you. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.